Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over engine management for the MiG-21. So the first engine control is the throttle. Uh, this controls how much air and gas goes to the engine. Uh, so if you pull it back, there's going to be less air and gas to the engine, and if you push it forward, the opposite. When you move the throttle, this gauge here is going to move. Um, this is the RPM gauge. This shows you how fast the engine is spinning. If you're wondering why the RPM gauge has two different needles, it's because the engine has two different sections that can spin at different speeds. So just below the RPM gauge uh, shows the engine temperature. And then in front of the stick is the oil pressure gauge. If the oil pressure ever gets too low, there is a, a little light here that comes on. While I'm talking about the throttle, one more control to go over is this a little lever right behind the throttle. So if, you're br if you bring your throttle all the way back and click this lever, it will put it into the, into the stop detent, which will shut off fuel to the engine. And then if you click it again, it will put it back into the idle detent. So that's only used for starting up and shutting down the plane. Obviously, you wouldn't use that while you're in flight. The engine does have an afterburner. Uh, you can turn it on by just putting your throttle all the way forward. The afterburner in this plane is really loud, and um, so you can basically know it's on just by listening. Uh, however, if you have your volume uh, really low, Another way you can tell that the afterburner is on is because this green light will come on here that says AFB. The afterburner allows you to accelerate very quickly and it allows the plane to go super fast. However, it also drains fuel very quickly, so use it sparingly. The plane also has a second emergency afterburner you can use that basically just makes the afterburner even more powerful. What you do is you bring your throttle all the way forward to turn on the first afterburner and then there's a switch in front of the throttle here if you turn that switch on, it'll turn on the second afterburner. So let me turn on the first one. And when I turn the second one on, you'll notice that the RPM and the temperature are going to jump up. So let me turn it on. So you can see the RPM went up a little bit and the temperature jumped up a lot. And you can see here it says second afterburner. Alright, so let's go over some more engine controls. The next one is the nose cone. So the MiG-21 has this nose cone that can move forward and backward based on the speed. This is basically to create the right amount of airflow to the engine so the engine doesn't stall or have any problems. So basically there's this gauge right here and this little white needle shows you the percent open that the nose is. So the zero would be the nose is all the way in, 100 is all the way out. So you can see right now the nose is 20% out. So the nose cone is basically controlled automatically and normally you don't have to worry about it. However, there is also a manual control mode you can do if you want. This is mainly meant for if the automatic system breaks. I'm not sure if it can actually break in DCS, but I'll teach you the manual system anyway, just in case. So if you come back here, um, there's this red switch and the switch right next to it is for the nose cone. So you can see up is automatic. If I put it down, it goes to manual. And you can see now I can use this little knob to manually control uh, the nose cone. Once again, there's not really a reason to do this in DCS, so I would just always leave it in automatic. All right, so next I'll go over engine flameouts. So in the MiG-21, an engine flameout is basically where the engine just stops. It just shuts off. The reason this happens is when there's not enough air going into the engine. Now, in the MiG-21, since this is a really old plane, the engine can flame out very easily. The MiG-21 engine cut, uh, can flame out a lot easier than the other planes in DCS. So it's super important to know how to restart it in the air. So first, you've got to know why does it flame out. So there's a couple different things. The first thing is if you fly upside down for too long, it can flame out. If you make super abrupt throttle movements, it can flame out. If you pull really high AOA for too long, it can flame out. Uh, so you can see the AOA gauge is here. Basically, the more you pull back on the stick, the higher the AOA will go. So if I pull back, you can see the AOA is going to jump up. If you keep your AOA in this red zone for too long, the engine could flame out. Another thing that can make the engine flame out is pushing negative G. If, you're, if you don't know what negative G is, normally if you pull back on the stick, that creates positive G. So if you push forward on the stick and make the nose go down like that, that is negative G. So if you do that too much, it can make the engine flame out. So as you can see, a lot of things can make the engine flame out in the MiG-21, and especially in DCS, in DCS it can happen really easily. So if it flames out, you don't have to worry, you can easily restart it. So I'm going to purposefully flame the engine out by flying upside down for a while. 
So I only flew upside down for about 15 seconds and it already flamed the engine out. So here's how to restart it. The first thing you gotta do is bring your throttle all the way back. Then what you gotta do is you gotta get some airspeed. Um, I'm already good enough, but if your airspeed is too low, um, I mean, you need like around 400, 450, 500 kilometers per hour. So if your speed is really low, um, then you're going to need to push the nose down to gain some speed, but I'm already good. So once you've got enough airspeed, um, there's a switch right here that says engine air start. And if you flip it up, it'll start the engine for you. And you can see my RPM's already going up. Once the RPM gets to idle, just move your throttle forward to make sure it's working. And once it's working, you can turn off the air restarter and you're good to go. All right, so the next engine control is this switch here. This is the anti-surge door switch. Now you're probably wondering, uh, what is an anti-surge door? So basically, the thing that we just went over, the engine flame out, that's what's happening if your engine doesn't get enough air. A surge is what happens is the opposite. If the engine is, if the plane's going so fast, and there's too much air going into the engine. So a surge can also cause the engine to stop. So what the anti-surge door switch does is if you put it down, it will open these little flaps on the front of the nose that will slow the plane down. So you can see the surge doors are these uh, little doors right here that open up. So basically what you're supposed to do is if you're going so fast that the engine uh, surges, what you do is you open these little you push the switch down to open those doors on the nose to slow the plane down. And then you bring your throttle back and you slow the plane down by, getting, uh, by gaining altitude. And then the engine should fix itself and then you can close the doors again. Now in DCS, I'm not sure if they have engine surges modeled or not. I've never had one in the MiG-21 before, but if it is modeled, that's how you fix it. All right, the last thing I'm gonna go over is the ARU system. Now the ARU system is not related to the engine, but I decided to put it to this video um, because it is something I wanted to mention in case you're wondering what it is. And I didn't know what other video I would put it in. So I decided I'll just put it in the engine management video. So basically the ARU is a system that adjusts how sensitive your stick is based on your airspeed and your altitude. So basically if you're flying really slow, then the ARU system is gonna make your stick really sensitive so even moving the stick a little bit will adjust the elevator on the back of the plane a lot. However, if you're going really fast, it's going to make um, your stick less sensitive. That way you need to move the stick more to adjust a certain amount of the elevator. The reason why is because if you're going super fast and you had the stick really sensitive, then even moving a, li a little bit, if you move the elevator a lot, um, all that airflow could break the elevator. So I'm gonna be explaining how this system works now um, so it can make more sense. So by default, this system is kind of like the nose cone. It's automatic. It automatically adjusts for you. You don't have to worry about anything. However, if it breaks, there is a manual mode. So next to your throttle, there's these two red switches here. So if you put it to manual, uh, and then you use this switch, you can manually adjust the um, sensitivity of the stick. The gauge for it is right here. The more left on the gauge is, the more sensitive your stick is. The more right on the gauge, the less sensitive. As I click this switch up and down, you can, if you look at the gauge, you'll see that the gauge will uh, move. So if I move the gauge all the way to the left, the stick is at its most sensitive point now. So even moving the stick a little bit will move the elevators a lot. So if I pull the stick back a little bit, you can see my plane is already turning pretty quickly. However, if I put the switch into its least sensitive position, now it, I need to move the stick a lot to move the elevator. So if I move the stick a little bit, you can see the plane's barely turning now. I need to move the stick a lot to get that much um, turn rate. And if I go and move the gauge back to the most sensitive position now, and I pull the stick back all the way, you can see now the plane's moving like crazy. So once again, this is a system that I would just always leave in automatic, uh, but you can adjust it manually if you want. That was the engine management for the MiG-21. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.